Venice, Venetian, Venezio Venezia, is a city in northeastern Italy, and the capital of the Veneto region. It is built on a group of 118 small islands that are separated by canals and linked by over 400 bridges. The islands are in the shallow Venetian lagoon, an enclosed bay lying between the mouths of the Po and the Piave rivers. In 2020, 258,685 people resided in the Comune di Venezia, of whom around 55,000 live in the historical city of Venice. Together with Padua and Treviso, the city is included in the Padua-Treviso-Venice metropolitan area, which is considered a statistical metropolitan area, with a total population of 2.6 million. The name is derived from the ancient Veneti people who inhabited the region by the 10th century BC. The city was historically the capital of the Republic of Venice for over a millennium, from 697 to 1797. It was a major financial and maritime power during the Middle Ages and Renaissance, and a staging area for the Crusades and the Battle of Lepanto, as well as an important center of commerce, especially silk, grain, and spice, and of art from the 13th century to the end of the 17th. The city-state of Venice is considered to have been the first real international financial center, emerging in the 9th century and reaching its greatest prominence in the 14th century. This made Venice a wealthy city throughout most of its history. After the Napoleonic Wars and the Congress of Vienna, the Republic was annexed by the Austrian Empire, until it became part of the Kingdom of Italy in 1866, following a referendum held as a result of the Third Italian War of Independence. Venice has been known as La Dominante, La Serenissima, Queen of the Adriatic, City of Water, City of Masks, City of Bridges, The Floating City, and City of Canals. The lagoon and a part of the city are listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Parts of Venice are renowned for the beauty of their settings, their architecture, and artwork. Venice is known for several important artistic movements, especially during the Renaissance period, and has played an important role in the history of instrumental and operatic music, and is the birthplace of Baroque composers Tommaso Albinoni and Antonio Vivaldi. Although the city is facing some challenges, Venice remains a very popular tourist destination, a major cultural center, and has been ranked many times the most beautiful city in the world. It has been described by the Times Online as one of Europe's most romantic cities and by the New York Times as undoubtedly the most beautiful city built by man. Chapter 1 – History Chapter 1 – Section 1 – Origins Although no surviving historical records deal directly with the founding of Venice, tradition and the available evidence have led several historians to agree that the original population of Venice consisted of refugees, from nearby Roman cities such as Padua, Aquilia, Treviso, Altino, and Concordia, as well as from the undefended countryside, who were fleeing successive waves of Germanic and Hun invasions. This is further supported by the documentation on the so-called apostolic families, the twelve founding families of Venice who elected the first doge, who in most cases trace their lineage back to Roman families. Some late Roman sources reveal the existence of fishermen, on the islands in the original marshy lagoons, who were referred to as Encoli Lacunae. The traditional founding is identified with the dedication of the first church, that of San Giacomo on the islet of Rialto said to have taken place at the stroke of noon on 25th of March 421. Beginning as early as AD 166 to 168, the Quadi and Marco Mani destroyed the main Roman town in the area, present-day Adezzo. This part of Roman Italy was again overrun in the early 5th century by the Visigoths and, some 50 years later, by the Huns led by Attila. The last and most enduring immigration into the north of the Italian peninsula, that of the Lombards in 568, left the Eastern Roman Empire only a small strip of coastline in the current Veneto, including Venice. The Roman-Byzantine territory was organized as the Exarchate of Ravenna, administered from that ancient port and overseen by a viceroy appointed by the emperor in Constantinople. Ravenna and Venice were connected only by sea routes and with the Venetians' isolation came increasing autonomy. New ports were built, 
including those at Malamocco and Torcello in the Venetian Lagoon. The Tribuni Maiores formed the earliest central standing governing committee of the islands in the lagoon, dating from circa 568. The traditional first doge of Venice, Paolo Lucio Anifesto, was elected in 697, as written in the oldest chronicle by John, deacon of Venice circa 1008. Some modern historians claim Paolo Lucio Anifesto was actually the exarch Paul, and Paul's successor, Marcello Tigaliano, was Paul's magister militum, literally master of soldiers. In 726 the soldiers and citizens of the Exarchate rose in a rebellion over the iconoclastic controversy, at the urging of Pope Gregory II. The Exarch, held responsible for the acts of his master, Byzantine Emperor Leo III, was murdered, and many officials were put to flight in the chaos. At about this time, the people of the lagoon elected their own independent leader for the first time, although the relationship of this to the uprisings is not clear. Osus was the first of 117 doges, the corresponding word in English is duke, in standard Italian duca. Whatever his original views, Osus supported Emperor Leo III's successful military expedition to recover Ravenna, sending both men and ships. In recognition of this, Venice was granted numerous privileges and concessions and Osus, who had personally taken the field, was confirmed by Leo as Dux. And given the added title of Hypatus. In 751, the Lombard king Ashtolf conquered most of the Exarchate of Ravenna, leaving Venice a lonely and increasingly autonomous Byzantine outpost. During this period, the seat of the local Byzantine governor, was at Malamocco. Settlement on the islands in the lagoon probably increased with the Lombard conquest of other Byzantine territories, as refugees sought asylum in the area. In 775 sixths, the episcopal seat of Olivolo was created. During the reign of Duke Agnello Particico the ducal seat moved from Malamocco to the more protected Rialto, within present-day Venice. The monastery of Saint Zachary, and the first ducal palace and basilica of Saint Mark, as well as a wall defense between Olivolo and Rialto, were subsequently built here. Charlemagne sought to subdue the city to his rule. He ordered the Pope to expel the Venetians from the Pentapolis along the Adriatic coast, Charlemagne's own son Pepe of Italy, king of the Lombards, under the authority of his father, embarked on a siege of Venice itself. This, however, proved a costly failure. The siege lasted six months, with Pepon's army ravaged by the diseases of the local swamps and eventually forced to withdraw in 810. A few months later, Pepa himself died, apparently as a result of a disease contracted there. In the aftermath, an agreement between Charlemagne and the Byzantine Emperor Nikephoros in 814 recognized Venice as Byzantine territory, and granted the city trading rights along the Adriatic coast. In 828 the new city's prestige increased with the acquisition, from Alexandria, of relics claimed to be of Saint Mark the Evangelist, these were placed in the new basilica. Winged lions, visible throughout Venice, are the emblem of Saint Mark. The patriarchal seat was also moved to Rialto. As the community continued to develop, and as Byzantine power waned, its own autonomy grew, leading to eventual independence. Chapter 1 Section 2 Expansion From the 9th to the 12th century, Venice developed into a powerful maritime empire. In addition to Venice there were seven others, the most important ones were Genoa, Pisa, and Amalfi, and the lesser known were Ragusa, Ancona, Gaeta, and Noli. Its own strategic position at the head of the Adriatic made Venetian naval and commercial power almost invulnerable. With the elimination of pirates along the Dalmatian coast, the city became a flourishing trade center between Western Europe and the rest of the world, especially with the Byzantine Empire and Asia, where its navy protected sea routes against piracy. The Republic of Venice seized a number of places on the eastern shores of the Adriatic before 1200, mostly for commercial reasons, because pirates based there were a menace to trade. The Doge already possessed the titles of Duke of Dalmatia and Duke of Istria. 
later mainland possessions, which extended across Lake Garda as far west as the Adha River, were known as the Terra Firma, they were acquired partly as a buffer against belligerent neighbors, partly to guarantee alpine trade routes, and partly to ensure the supply of mainland wheat. In building its maritime commercial empire, Venice dominated the trade in salt, acquired control of most of the islands in the Aegean, including Crete, and Cyprus in the Mediterranean, and became a major power broker in the Near East. By the standards of the time, Venice's stewardship of its mainland territories was relatively enlightened and the citizens of such towns as Bergamo, Brescia, and Verona rallied to the defense of Venetian sovereignty when it was threatened by invaders. Venice remained closely associated with Constantinople, being twice granted trading privileges in the Eastern Roman Empire, through the so-called Golden Bulls or Chrysobulls, in return for aiding the Eastern Empire to resist Norman and Turkish incursions. In the first crucible, Venice acknowledged its homage to the empire, but not in the second, reflecting the decline of Byzantium and the rise of Venice's power. Venice became an imperial power following the Fourth Crusade, which, having veered off course, culminated in 1204 by capturing and sacking Constantinople and establishing the Latin Empire. As a result of this conquest, considerable Byzantine plunder was brought back to Venice. This plunder included the gilt bronze horses from the Hippodrome of Constantinople, which were originally placed above the entrance to the Cathedral of Venice, St. Mark's Basilica after the fall of Constantinople, the former Eastern Roman Empire was partitioned among the Latin Crusaders and the Venetians. Venice subsequently carved out a sphere of influence in the Mediterranean known as the Duchy of the Archipelago, and captured Crete. The seizure of Constantinople proved as decisive a factor in ending the Byzantine Empire as the loss of the Anatolian themes, after Manzikert. Although the Byzantines recovered control of the ravaged city a half-century later, the Byzantine Empire was terminally weakened, and existed as a ghost of its old self, until Sultan Mehmet the Conqueror took the city in 1453. Situated on the Adriatic Sea, Venice had always traded extensively with the Byzantine Empire and the Middle East. By the late 13th century, Venice was the most prosperous city in all of Europe. At the peak of its power and wealth, it had 36,000 sailors operating 3,300 ships, dominating Mediterranean commerce. Venice's leading families vied with each other to build the grandest palaces and to support the work of the greatest and most talented artists. The city was governed by the Great Council, which was made up of members of the noble families of Venice. The Great Council appointed all public officials, and elected a senate of 200 to 300 individuals. Since this group was too large for efficient administration, a council of ten, controlled much of the administration of the city. One member of the Great Council was elected Doge, or Duke, to be the chief executive, he would usually hold the title until his death, although several doges were forced, by pressure from their oligarchical peers, to resign and retire into monastic seclusion, when they were felt to have been discredited by political failure. The Venetian governmental structure was similar in some ways to the republican system of ancient Rome, with an elected chief executive, a senator-like assembly of nobles, and the general citizenry with limited political power, who originally had the power to grant or withhold their approval of each newly elected doge. Church and various private property was tied to military service, although there was no knight tenure within the city itself. The Cavalieri di San Marco, was the only order of chivalry ever instituted in Venice, and no citizen could accept or join a foreign order without the government's consent. Venice remained a republic throughout its independent period, and politics and the military were kept separate, except when on occasion the doge personally headed the military. War was regarded as a continuation of commerce by other means. Therefore, the city's early employment of large numbers of mercenaries for service elsewhere, and later its reliance on foreign mercenaries when the ruling class was preoccupied with commerce. Although the people of Venice generally remained Orthodox Roman Catholics, the state of Venice was notable for its freedom from religious fanaticism, and executed nobody for religious heresy during the Counter-Reformation. This apparent lack of zeal contributed to Venice's frequent conflicts with the papacy. 
In this context, the writings of the Anglican divine William Bedell are particularly illuminating. Venice was threatened with the interdict on a number of occasions and twice suffered its imposition. The second, most noted, occasion was in 1606, by order of Pope Paul V. The newly invented German printing press spread rapidly throughout Europe in the 15th century, and Venice was quick to adopt it. By 1482, Venice was the printing capital of the world, the leading printer was Aldus Minucius, who invented paperback books that could be carried in a saddlebag. His Aldine editions included translations of nearly all the known Greek manuscripts of the era. Chapter 1 Section 3 Decline Venice's long decline started in the 15th century. Venice confronted the Ottoman Empire in the siege of Thessalonica and sent ships to help defend Constantinople against the besieging Turks in 1453. After the fall of Constantinople Sultan Mehmed II declared the first of a series of Ottoman-Venetian wars that cost Venice much of its eastern Mediterranean possessions. Vasco da Gama's 1497-1499 voyage opened a sea route to India around the Cape of Good Hope and destroyed Venice's monopoly. Venice's oared vessels were at a disadvantage when it came to traversing oceans, therefore Venice was left behind in the race for colonies. The Black Death devastated Venice in 1348 and struck again between 1575 and 1577. In three years, the plague killed some 50,000 people. In 1630, the Italian plague of 1629-31 killed a third of Venice's 150,000 citizens. Venice began to lose its position as a center of international trade during the later part of the Renaissance as Portugal became Europe's principal intermediary in the trade with the East, striking at the very foundation of Venice's great wealth. France and Spain fought for hegemony over Italy in the Italian wars, marginalizing its political influence. However, Venice remained a major exporter of agricultural products and until the mid-18th century, a significant manufacturing center. Chapter 1 Section 4 – Modern Age During the 18th century, Venice became perhaps the most elegant and refined city in Europe, greatly influencing art, architecture, and literature. But the Republic lost its independence when Napoleon Bonaparte conquered Venice on 12 May 1797 during the War of the First Coalition. Napoleon was seen as something of a liberator by the city's Jewish population. He removed the gates of the ghetto and ended the restrictions on when and where Jews could live and travel in the city. Venice became Austrian territory when Napoleon signed the Treaty of Campo Formio on 12 October 1797. The Austrians took control of the city on 18 January 1798. Venice was taken from Austria by the Treaty of Pressburg in 1805 and became part of Napoleon's Kingdom of Italy. It was returned to Austria following Napoleon's defeat in 1814, when it became part of the Austrian-held Kingdom of Lombardy-Venetia. In 1848 a revolt briefly re-established the Venetian Republic under Daniele Manin, but this was crushed in 1849. In 1866, after the Third Italian War of Independence, Venice, along with the rest of the Veneto, became part of the newly created Kingdom of Italy. From the middle of the 18th century, Triessa and Papal Ancona, both of which became free ports, competed with Venice more and more economically. Habsburg Trieste in particular boomed and increasingly served trade via the Suez Canal, which opened in 1869, between Asia and Central Europe, while Venice very quickly lost its competitive edge and commercial strength. During the Second World War, the historic city was largely free from attack, the only aggressive effort of note being Operation Bola, a successful Royal Air Force precision strike on the German naval operations in the city in March 1945. The targets were destroyed with virtually no architectural damage inflicted on the city itself. However, the industrial areas in Mesta and Marghera and the railway lines to Padua, Triessa, and Trento were repeatedly bombed. On 29 April 1945, a force of British and New Zealand troops of the British Eighth Army, under Lieutenant General Freiburg, liberated Venice, 
which had been a hotbed of anti-Mussolini Italian partisan activity. Chapter 2 Geography Venice sits atop alluvial silt washed into the sea by the rivers flowing eastward from the Alps across the Veneto plain, with the silt being stretched into long banks, or liddy, by the action of the current flowing around the head of the Adriatic Sea from east to west. Chapter 2 Section 1 Subsidence Subsidence, the gradual lowering of the surface of Venice, has contributed, along with other factors, to the seasonal aqua alta when much of the city's surface, is occasionally covered at high tide. Chapter 2 Section 1 Subsection 2 Building Foundations Those fleeing barbarian invasions who found refuge on the sandy islands of Torcello, Isolo, and Malamocco, in this coastal lagoon, learned to build by driving closely spaced piles consisting of the trunks of alder trees, a wood noted for its water resistance, into the mud and sand, until they reached a much harder layer of compressed clay. Building foundations rested on plates of Istrian limestone placed on top of the piles. Chapter 2 Section 1 Subsection 3 Flooding Between autumn and early spring, the city is often threatened by flood tides pushing in from the Adriatic. Six hundred years ago, Venetians protected themselves from land-based attacks by diverting all the major rivers flowing into the lagoon and thus preventing sediment from filling the area around the city. This created an ever deeper lagoon environment. Additionally, the lowest part of Venice, St. Mark's Basilica, is only 64 cm above sea level, and one of the most flood prone parts of the city. In 1604, to defray the cost of flood relief, Venice introduced what could be considered the first example of a stamped tax. When the revenue fell short of expectations in 1608, Venice introduced paper with the superscription ACK and imprinted instructions, which was to be used for letters to officials. At first, this was to be a temporary tax, but it remained in effect until the fall of the Republic in 1797. Shortly after the introduction of the tax, Spain produced similar paper for general taxation purposes, and the practice spread to other countries. During the 20th century, when many artesian wells were sunk into the periphery of the lagoon to draw water for local industry, Venice began to subside. It was realized that extraction of water from the aquifer was the cause. The sinking has slowed markedly since artesian wells were banned in the 1960s. However, the city is still threatened by more frequent low-level floods, the aqua alta, that rise to a height of several centimeters over its keys, regularly following certain tides. In many old houses, staircases once used to unload goods are now flooded, rendering the former ground floor uninhabitable. Studies indicate that the city continues sinking at a relatively slow rate of 1 to 2 mm per annum, therefore, the state of alert has not been revoked. In May 2003, Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi inaugurated the MOSE project, an experimental model for evaluating the performance of hollow floatable gates, the idea is to fix a series of 78 hollow pontoons to the seabed across the three entrances to the lagoon. When tides are predicted to rise above 110 cm, the pontoons will be filled with air, causing them to float and block the incoming water from the Adriatic Sea. This engineering work was due to be completed by 2018. A Reuters report stated that the Mose project attributed the delay to corruption scandals. The project is not guaranteed to be successful and the cost has been very high, with as much as approximately 2 billion euros of the cost lost to corruption. According to a spokesman for the FI, Mose is a faonic project that should have cost 800 million euros but will cost at least 7 billion euros. If the barriers are closed at only 90 centimeters of high water, most of St. Mark's will be flooded anyway, but if closed at very high levels only, then people will wonder at the logic of spending such sums on something that didn't solve the problem. And pressure will come from the cruise ships to keep the gates open. On the 13th of November 2019, Venice was flooded when waters peaked at 1.87 meters, the highest tide since 1966. More than 80% of the city was covered by water, which damaged cultural heritage sites, including more than 50 churches, leading to tourists cancelling their visits. 
The planned flood barrier would have prevented this incident according to various sources, including Marco Piana, the head of conservation at St. Mark's Basilica. The mayor promised that work on the flood barrier would continue, and the prime minister announced that the government would be accelerating the project. The city's mayor, Luigi Brugnero, blamed the floods on climate change. The chambers of the Regional Council of Veneto began to be flooded around 10 p.m., two minutes after the council rejected a plan to combat global warming. One of the effects of climate change is sea level rise which causes an increase in frequency and magnitude of floodings in the city. A Washington Post report provided a more thorough analysis, the sea level has been rising even more rapidly in Venice than in other parts of the world. At the same time, the city is sinking, the result of tectonic plates shifting below the Italian coast. Those factors together, along with the more frequent extreme weather events associated with climate change, contribute to floods. Henko Vink, an expert on flooding, told CNN that, while environmental factors are part of the problem, historic floods in Venice are not only a result of the climate crisis but poor infrastructure and mismanagement. The government of Italy committed to providing 20 million euros in funding to help the city repair the most urgent aspects although Brugnero's estimate of the total damage was hundreds of millions to at least 1 billion euros. On 3 October 2020, the Mose was activated for the first time in response to a predicted high tide event, preventing some of the low-lying parts of the city from being flooded. Chapter 2 Section 2 Climate According to the Kirpan Climate Classification, Venice has a mid-latitude, four-season humid subtropical climate, with cool winters and hot, humid summers. The 24-hour average temperature in January is 3.3 degrees Celsius, and for July this figure is 23.0 degrees Celsius. Precipitation is spread relatively evenly throughout the year, and averages 748 mm, snow isn't a rarity between late November and early March. During the most severe winters, the canals and parts of the lagoon can freeze, but with the warming trend of the past 30 to 40 years, the occurrence has become rarer. Chapter 3 Demographics The city was one of the largest in Europe in the High Middle Ages, with a population of 60,000 in AD 1000, 80,000 in 1200, and rising up to 110,000 to 180,000 in 1300. In the mid-1500s the city's population was 170,000, and by 1,600 almost, 200,000. In 2009, there were 270,098 people residing in the Comune of Venice, 176,000 in Terraferma, and 31,000 on other islands in the lagoon, 47.4% were male and 52.6% were female. Miners were 14.36% of the population compared to pensioners who numbered 25.7%. This compared with the Italian average of 18.06% and 19.94%, respectively. The average age of Venice residents was 46 compared to the Italian average of 42. In the five years between 2002 and 2007, the population of Venice declined by 0.2%, while Italy as a whole grew by 3.85%. The population in the historic Old City declined much faster, from about 120,000 in 1980 to about 60,000 in 2009, and to below 55,000 in 2016. As of 2018, 86% of the population was Italian. The largest immigrant groups include, 5,934 Bangladeshis, 5,578 Romanians, 4,460 Moldovans, 3,351 Chinese, and 2,511 Ukrainians. Venice is predominantly Roman Catholic, but because of the long standing relationship with Constantinople, there is also a noticeable Orthodox presence, and as a result of immigration, there is now a large Muslim community and some Hindu and Buddhist inhabitants. Since 1991, the Church of San Giorgio dei Greci in Venice has become the see of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of Italy and Malta and Exarchate of Southern Europe, 
a Byzantine Rite diocese under the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople. There is also a historic Jewish community in Venice. The Venetian ghetto was the area in which Jews were compelled to live under the Venetian Republic. The word ghetto, originally Venetian, is now found in many languages. Shakespeare's play The Merchant of Venice, written in the late 16th century, features Shylock, a Venetian Jew. The first complete and uncensored printed edition of the Talmud was printed in Venice by Daniel Bomberg in 1523. During World War II, Jews were rounded up in Venice and deported to extermination camps. Since the end of the war, the Jewish population of Venice has declined from 1500 to about 500. Only around 30 Jews live in the former ghetto which houses the city's major Jewish institutions. In modern times, Venice has an Eruv, used by the Jewish community. Chapter 4, Government Chapter 4 Section 1, Local and Regional Government The legislative body of the Comune is the City Council, which is composed of 36 councillors elected every five years with a proportional system, contextually to the mayoral elections. The executive body is the city administration, composed of 12 assessors nominated and presided over by a directly elected mayor. Venice was governed by centre-left parties from the early 1990s until the 2010s, when the mayor started to be elected directly. Its region, Veneto, has long been a conservative stronghold, with the coalition between the regionalist Lega Nord and the centre-right Forza Italia winning absolute majorities of the electorate in many elections at local, national, and regional levels. The current mayor of Venice is Luigi Brugnero, a centre-right independent businessman who is currently serving his second term in office. The municipality of Venice is also subdivided into six administrative boroughs. Each borough is governed by a council and a president, elected every five years. The urban organization is dictated by Article 114 of the Italian Constitution. The boroughs have the power to advise the mayor with non-binding opinions on a large spectrum of topics and exercise the functions delegated to them by the city council, in addition, they are supplied with autonomous funding to finance local activities. The boroughs are Notes Chapter 4 Section 2 Sestieri. The historic city of Venice is divided into six areas called Sestieri. Each Sestier is now a statistical and historical area without any degree of autonomy. The six fingers or phalanges of the ferro on the bow of a gondola represent the six Sestieri. The Sestieri are divided into parishes, initially 70 in 1033, but reduced under Napoleon, and now numbering just 38. These parishes predate the Sestieri, which were created in about 1170. Each parish exhibited unique characteristics but also belonged to an integrated network. Each community chose its own patron saint, staged its own festivals, congregated around its own market center, constructed its own bell towers, and developed its own customs. Other islands of the Venetian lagoon do not form part of any of the Sestieri having historically enjoyed a considerable degree of autonomy. Each sestier has its own house numbering system. Each house has a unique number in the district, from one to several thousand, generally numbered from one corner of the area to another, but not usually in a readily understandable manner. Chapter 5, Economy Venice's economy has changed throughout history. Although there is little specific information about the earliest years, it is likely that an important source of the city's prosperity was the trade in slaves, captured in Central Europe and sold to North Africa and the Levant. Venice's location at the head of the Adriatic, and directly south of the terminus of the Brenner Pass over the Alps, would have given it a distinct advantage as a middleman in this important trade. In the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, Venice was a major center for commerce and trade, as it controlled a vast sea empire, and became an extremely wealthy European city and a leader in political and economic affairs. From the 11th century until the 15th century, pilgrimages to the Holy Land were offered in Venice. Other ports such as Genoa, Pisa, Marseille, Ancona, 
and Dubrovnik were hardly able to compete with the well-organized transportation of pilgrims from Venice. Armenian merchants from Julfa were the leading traders in Venice, especially the Skeriman family in the 17th century. They were specialized in the gems and diamonds business. The trade volume reached millions of tons, which was exceptional for 17th century. This all changed by the 17th century, when Venice's trade empire was taken over by countries such as Portugal, and its importance as a naval power was reduced. In the 18th century, it became a major agricultural and industrial exporter. The 18th century's biggest industrial complex was the Venice Arsenal, and the Italian army still uses it today. Since World War II, many Venetians have moved to the neighboring cities of Mestre and Porto Marghera, seeking employment as well as affordable housing. Today, Venice's economy is mainly based on tourism, shipbuilding, services, trade, and industrial exports. Murano glass production in Murano and lace production in Burano are also highly important to the economy. The city is facing financial challenges. In late 2016, it had a major deficit in its budget, and debts in excess of 400 million euros. In effect, the place is bankrupt, according to a report by The Guardian. Many locals are leaving the historic center due to rapidly increasing rents. The declining native population affects the character of the city, as an October 2016 National Geographic article pointed out in its subtitle, residents are abandoning the city, which is in danger of becoming an overpriced theme park. The city is also facing other challenges, including erosion, pollution, subsidence, an excessive number of tourists in peak periods, and problems caused by oversized cruise ships sailing close to the banks of the historical city. In June 2017, Italy was required to bail out two Venetian banks, the Banca Popolare di Vicenza and Veneto Banca, to prevent their bankruptcies. Both banks would be wound down and their assets that have value taken over by another Italian bank, Intesa San Paolo, which would receive 5.2 billion euros as compensation. The Italian government would be responsible for losses from any uncollectible loans from the closed banks. The cost would be 5.2 billion euros, with further guarantees to cover bad loans totaling 12 billion euros. Chapter 5 Section 1 Tourism Venice is an important destination for tourists who want to see its celebrated art and architecture. The city hosts up to 60,000 tourists per day. Estimates of the annual number of tourists vary from 22 million to 30 million. This over-tourism creates overcrowding and environmental problems for Venice's ecosystem. By 2017, UNESCO was considering the addition of Venice to its in danger list, which includes historical ruins in war-torn countries. To reduce the number of visitors, who are causing irreversible changes in Venice, the agency supports limiting the number of cruise ships as well as implementing a strategy for more sustainable tourism. Tourism has been a major part of the Venetian economy since the 18th century, when Venice, with its beautiful cityscape, uniqueness, and rich musical and artistic cultural heritage, was a stop on the Grand Tour. In the 19th century, Venice became a fashionable center for the rich and famous, who often stayed and dined at luxury establishments, such as the Daniele Hotel and the Café Florian, and continued to be a fashionable city into the early 20th century. In the 1980s, the Carnival of Venice was revived, and the city has become a major center of international conferences and festivals, such as the prestigious Venice Biennale and the Venice Film Festival, which attract visitors from all over the world for their theatrical, cultural, cinematic, artistic, and musical productions. Today, there are numerous attractions in Venice, such as St. Mark's Basilica, the Doge's Palace, the Grand Canal, and the Piazza San Marco. The Lido di Venezia is also a popular international luxury destination, attracting thousands of actors, critics, celebrities, and others in the cinematic industry. The city also relies heavily on the cruise business. The Cruise Venice Committee has estimated that cruise ship passengers spend more than 150 million euros annually in the city, according to a 2015 report. Other reports, however, 
point out that such day trippers spend relatively little in the few hours of their visits to the city. Venice is regarded by some as a tourist trap, and by others as a living museum. Chapter 5 Section 1 Subsection 2 Mitigating the Effects of Tourism The need to protect the city's historic environment and fragile canals, in the face of a possible loss of jobs produced by cruise tourism, has seen the Italian Transport Ministry attempt to introduce a ban on large cruise ships visiting the city. A 2013 ban would have allowed only cruise ships smaller than 40,000 gross tons to enter the Giudecca Canal and St. Mark's Basin. In January 2015, a regional court scrapped the ban, but some global cruise lines indicated that they would continue to respect it until a long-term solution for the protection of Venice is found. P&O Cruises removed Venice from its summer schedule, Holland America moved one of its ships from this area to Alaska, and Cunard reduced the number of visits by its ships. As a result, the Venice Port Authority estimated an 11.4% drop in cruise ships arriving in 2017 versus 2016, leading to a similar reduction in income for Venice. Having failed in its 2013 bid to ban oversized cruise ships from the Judeca Canal, the city switched to a new strategy in mid-2017, banning the creation of any additional hotels. Currently, there are over 24,000 hotel rooms. The ban does not affect short-term rentals in the historic center which are causing an increase in the cost of living for the native residents of Venice. The city had already banned any additional fast food, takeaway outlets, to retain the historic character of the city, which was another reason for freezing the number of hotel rooms. Fewer than half of the millions of annual visitors stay overnight, however the city also considered a ban on wheeled suitcases, but settled for banning hard plastic wheels for transporting cargo from May 2015. In addition to accelerating erosion of the ancient city's foundations and creating some pollution in the lagoon, cruise ships dropping an excessive number of day trippers can make St. Mark's Square and other popular attractions too crowded to walk through during the peak season. Government officials see little value to the economy from the eat and flee tourists who stay for less than a day which is typical of those from cruise ships. Some locals continue to aggressively lobby for new methods that would reduce the number of cruise ship passengers, their estimate indicated that there are up to 30,000 such sightseers per day at peak periods, while others concentrate their effort on promoting a more responsible way of visiting the city. An unofficial referendum to ban large cruise ships was held in June 2017. More than 18,000 people voted at 60 polling booths set up by activists, and 17,874 favored banning large ships from the lagoon. The population of Venice at the time was about 50,000. The organizers of the referendum backed a plan to build a new cruise ship terminal at one of the three entrances to the Venetian lagoon. Passengers would be transferred to the historic area in smaller boats. On 28 February 2019, the Venice City Council voted in favor of a new municipal regulation requiring day trippers visiting the historic center and the islands in the lagoon to pay a new access fee. The extra revenue from the fee would be used for cleaning, maintaining security, reducing the financial burden on residents of Venice, and to allow Venetians to live with more decorum. The new tax would be between €3 Euros and €10 Euros per person, depending on the expected tourist flow into the old city. The fee could be waived for certain types of travellers, including students, children under the age of six, voluntary workers, residents of the Veneto region, and participants in sporting events. Overnight visitors, who already pay a stay tax and account for around 40% of Venice's yearly total of 28 million visitors, would also be exempted. The access fee was expected to come into effect in September 2019, but it was postponed, firstly, until the 1st of January 2020, and then, again, due to the coronavirus pandemic. The new charges would be imposed on those tourists who were not staying overnight, and is expected to come into force on the 1st of January 2022. Chapter 5 Section 1 Subsection 3 Diverting Cruise Ships Having failed in its 2013 bid to ban oversized cruise ships from the Judeca Canal, 
the Italian Interministerial Comitatone overseeing Venice's lagoon released an official directive in November 2017 to keep the largest cruise ships away from the Piazza San Marco, and the entrance to the Grand Canal. Ships over 55,000 tons will be required to follow a specific route through the Vittorio Emanuele III Canal to reach Marghera, an industrial area of the mainland, where a passenger terminal would be built. In 2014, the United Nations warned the city that it may be placed on UNESCO's list of World Heritage in Danger Sites unless cruise ships are banned from the canals near the historic center. According to the officials, the plan to create an alternate route for ships would require extensive dredging of the canal and the building of a new port, which would take four years, in total, to complete. However, the activist group No Grandi Navi, argued that the effects of pollution caused by the ships would not be diminished by the rerouting plan. On 2 June 2019, the cruise ship MSC Opera rammed a tourist riverboat, the River Countess, which was docked on the Judeca Canal, injuring five people, in addition to causing property damage. The incident immediately led to renewed demands to ban large cruise ships from the Judeca Canal, including a Twitter message to that effect posted by the Environment Minister. The city's mayor urged authorities to accelerate the steps required for cruise ships to begin using the alternate Vittorio Emanuele Canal. Italy's transport minister spoke of a solution to protect both the lagoon and tourism, after many years of inertia but specifics were not reported. As of June 2019, the 2017 plan to establish an alternative route for large ships, preventing them from coming near the historic area of the city, has not yet been approved. Nonetheless, the Italian government released an announcement on 7 August 2019 that it would begin rerouting cruise ships larger than 1,000 tons away from the historic city's Judeca Canal. For the last four months of 2019, all heavy vessels will dock at the Fusina and Lombardia terminals which are still on the lagoon but away from the central islands. By 2020, one-third of all cruise sh ships will be rerouted, according to Danilo Toninelli, the Minister for Venice. Preparation work for the Vittorio Emanuele Canal needed to begin soon for a long-term solution, according to the Cruise Lines International Association. In the long term, space for ships would be provided at new terminals, perhaps at Chiorgia or Lido San Nicolo. That plan was not imminent however, since public consultations had not yet begun. Over 1.5 million people per year arrive in Venice on cruise ships. The Italian government decided to divert large cruise ships beginning August, 2021. Chapter 6, Transport Chapter 6, Section 1, In the Historic Center Venice is built on an archipelago of 118 islands in a shallow, 550 square kilometers lagoon, connected by 400 bridges over 177 canals. In the 19th century, a causeway to the mainland brought the railroad to Venice. The adjoining Ponte della Libertà Road causeway and terminal parking facilities in Trinchetto Island and Piazzale Roma were built during the 20th century. Beyond these rail and road terminals on the northern edge of the city, transportation within the city's historic center remains, as it was in centuries past, entirely on water or on foot. Venice is Europe's largest urban car-free area, and is unique in Europe in having remained a sizable functioning city in the 21st century entirely without motorcars or trucks. The classic Venetian boat is the gondola, although it is now mostly used for tourists, or for weddings, funerals, or other ceremonies, or as traghetti to cross the Grand Canal in lieu of a nearby bridge. The Trigetti are operated by two oarsmen. For some years there were seven such boats, but by 2017, only three remained. There are approximately 400 licensed gondoliers in Venice, in their distinctive livery, and a similar number of boats, down from 10,000, two centuries ago. Many gondolas are lushly appointed with crushed velvet seats and Persian rugs. At the front of each gondola that works in the city, there is a large piece of metal called the faro. Its shape has evolved through the centuries, as documented in many well-known paintings. Its form, topped by a likeness of the doge's hat, became gradually standardized, 
and was then fixed by local law. It consists of six bars pointing forward representing the sestieri of the city, and one that points backwards representing the judeca. A lesser known boat is the smaller, simpler, but similar, sandalo. Chapter 6, Section 1 Subsection 2 Waterways Venice's small islands were enhanced during the Middle Ages by the dredging of soil to raise the marshy ground above the tides. The resulting canals encouraged the flourishing of a nautical culture which proved central to the economy of the city. Today those canals still provide the means for transport of goods and people within the city. The maze of canals threading through the city requires more than 400 bridges to permit the flow of foot traffic. In 2011, the city opened the Ponte della Costituzione, the fourth bridge across the Grand Canal, which connects the Piazzale Roma bus terminal area with the Venezia Santa Lucia railway station. The other bridges are the original Ponte di Rialto, the Ponte dell'Accademia, and the Ponte di Scalzi. Chapter 6, Section 2, Public Transport Azienda del Consorzio Trasporti Veneziano is a public company responsible for public transportation in Venice. Chapter 6, Section 2 Subsection 2 Lagoon Area The main means of public transportation consists of motorized waterbuses which ply regular routes along the Grand Canal and between the city's islands. Private motorized water taxis are also active. The only gondola still in common use by Venetians are the traghetti, foot passenger ferries crossing the Grand Canal at certain points where there are no convenient bridges. Other gondolae are rented by tourists on an hourly basis. The Venice People Mover is an elevated shuttle train public transit system connecting Trinchetto Island with its car parking facility with Piazzale Roma, where visitors arrive in the city by bus, taxi, or automobile. The train makes a stop at the Maritima Cruise Terminal at the Port of Venice. Chapter 6, Section 2, Subsection 3 Lido and Pelestrina Islands. Lido and Pelestrina are two islands forming a barrier between the southern Venetian lagoon and the Adriatic Sea. On those islands, road traffic, including bus service, is allowed. Vaporetti link them with other islands and with the peninsula of Cavallino Triporti. Chapter 6, Section 2 Subsection 4 Mainland The mainland of Venice is composed of five boroughs, Mesta Carpinedo, Marghera, Cairignago Zellerino, and Favaro Veneto. Mesta is the center and the most populous urban area of the mainland. There are several bus routes and two Translaw tramway lines. Several bus routes and one of the tramway lines link the mainland with Piazzale Roma, the main bus station in Venice, via Ponte della Libertà, the road bridge connecting the mainland with the group of islands that comprise the historic center of Venice. The average amount of time people spend commuting with public transit in Venice, for example to and from work, on a weekday is 52 minutes only 12.2% of public transit riders ride for more than two hours every day. The average amount of time people wait at a stop or station for public transit is 10 minutes, while 17.6% of riders wait for over 20 minutes on average every day. The average distance people usually ride in a single trip with public transit is 7 km, while 12% travel for over 12 km in a single direction. Chapter 6 Section 3 Rail Venice is serviced by regional and national trains including trains to Florence, Milan, Turin, Rome, and Naples. In addition there are international day trains to Zurich, Innsbruck, Munich, and Vienna, plus overnight sleeper services, to Paris and Dijon on Othello trains, and to Munich and Vienna via OBB. The Venezia Santa Lucia railway station is a few steps away from a Vaporetti stop in the historic city next to the Piazzale Roma. As well as for other, local trains, this station is the terminus of the luxury Venice Simplan Orient Express from London via Paris and other cities. The Venezia Mesta railway station is on the mainland, on the border between the boroughs of Mesta and Marghera. Both stations are managed by Grandi Stazioni, they are linked by the Ponte della Libertà between the mainland and the city centre. 
Other stations in the municipality are Venezia Porto Marghera, Venezia Carpinedo, Venezia Mesta Ospedale, and Venezia Mesta Porto Ovest. Chapter 6, Section 4, Ports the port of Venice is the eighth busiest commercial port in Italy and was a major hub for the cruise sector in the Mediterranean, as since August, 2021 ships of more 25,000 tons are forbidden to pass the Giudecca Canal. It is one of the major Italian ports and is included in the list of the leading European ports which are located on the strategic nodes of trans-European networks. In 2002, the port handled 262,337 containers. In 2006, 30,936,931 tons passed through the port, of which 14,541,961 was commercial traffic, and saw 1,453,513 passengers. Chapter 6, Section 5, Aviation the Marco Polo International Airport is named in honor of Marco Polo. The airport is on the mainland and was rebuilt away from the coast. Public transport from the airport takes one to Venice Piazzale Roma by Atvo buses and by ACT buses. Venice, Lido, and Murano by Alilagana motor boats. Mesta, the mainland, where Venice Mesta railway station is convenient for connections to Milan, Padova, Triesa, Verona and the rest of Italy, and for ACT and ATVO buses and other transport. Regional destinations, such as Treviso and Padua, by ATVO and Visitalia Cita Nord buses. Venice Treviso Airport, about 30 km from Venice, is used mainly by low-cost airlines. There are public buses from this airport to Venice. Venezia Lido Giovanni Nicelli, a public airport suitable for smaller aircraft, is at the northeast end of Lido di Venezia. It has a 994 meter grass runway. Chapter 7 Sport The most famous Venetian sport is probably Voga alla Veneta, also commonly called Voga Veneta. A technique invented in the Venetian lagoon. Venetian rowing is unusual in that the rower, one or more, row standing, looking forward. Today, Voga alla Veneta is not only the way the gondoliers row tourists around Venice but also the way Venetians row for pleasure and sport. Many races called regatta happen throughout the year. The culminating event of the rowing season is the day of the regatta storica, which occurs on the first Sunday of September each year. The main football club in the city is Venezia FC, founded in 1907, which currently plays in the Serie A. Their ground, the Stadio Pier Luigi Penzo, situated in Sant'Elena, is one of the oldest sports venues in Italy. The local basketball club is Rea Venezia, founded in 1872 as the gymnastics club Società Sportiva Costantino Rea and in 1907 as the basketball club. Rea currently plays in the Lega Basket Serie A. The men's team were the Italian champions in 1942, 1943, and 2017. Their arena is the Palace Borge Giuseppe Torlesio, situated in Mesta. Luigi Brugnero is both the president of the club and the mayor of the city. Chapter 8, Education Venice is a major international center for higher education. The city hosts the C.A. Focari University of Venice, founded in 1868, the Università Uav di Venezia, founded in 1926, the Venice International University, founded in 1995 and located on the island of San Servolo and the AIC European Inter-University Center for Human Rights and Democratization, located on the island of Lido di Venezia. Other Venetian institutions of higher education are, the Accademia di Bellarti, established in 1750, whose first chairman was Giovanni Battista Piazzetta, and the Benedetto Marcello Conservatory of Music, which was first established in 1876 as a high school and musical society, later became Liceo Musicale, and finally, when its director was Gian Francesco Malipiero, the State Conservatory of Music. Chapter 9, Culture Chapter 9 Section 1, Literature Venice has long been a source of inspiration for authors, playwrights, 
and poets, and at the forefront of the technological development of printing and publishing. Two of the most noted Venetian writers were Marco Polo in the Middle Ages and, later, Giacomo Casanova. Polo was a merchant who voyaged to the Orient. His series of books, co-written with Rusticello de Pisa and titled Il Milioni provided important knowledge of the lands east of Europe, from the Middle East to China, Japan, and Russia. Giacomo Casanova was a prolific writer and adventurer best remembered for his autobiography, Estoire de Mar Vie, which links his colorful lifestyle to the city of Venice. Venetian playwrights followed the old Italian theatre tradition of Commedia dell'arte. Rusanti, Carlo Goldoni, and Carlo Garzi used the Venetian dialect extensively in their comedies. Venice has also inspired writers from abroad. Shakespeare set Othello and the Merchant of Venice in the city, as did Thomas Mann his novel, Death in Venice. The French writer Philippe Solas spent most of his life in Venice and published a dictionary for lovers of Venice in 2004. The city features prominently in Henry James's The Aspen Papers and The Wings of the Dove. It is also visited in Evelyn Waugh's Brideshead Revisited and Marcel Proust's In Search of Lost Time. Perhaps the best-known children's book set in Venice is The Thief Lord, written by the German author Cornelia Funke. The poet Ugo Focolo, born in Zanti, an island that at the time belonged to the Republic of Venice, was also a revolutionary, who wanted to see a free republic established in Venice following its fall to Napoleon. Venice also inspired the poetry of Ezra Pound, who wrote his first literary work in the city. Pound died in 1972, and his remains are buried in Venice's cemetery island of San Michele. Venice is also linked to the technological aspects of writing. The city was the location of one of Italy's earliest printing presses called Aldine Press, established by Aldus Minucius in 1494. From this beginning Venice developed as an important typographic center. Around 15% of all printing of the 15th century came from Venice, and even as late as the 18th century was responsible for printing half of Italy's published books. Chapter 9 Section 1 Subsection 2 In Literature and Adapted Works The city is a particularly popular setting for essays, novels, and other works of fictional or non-fictional literature. Examples of these include Artino's works Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice and Othello. Ben Jonson's Volpone. Casanova's Autobiographical History of My Life circa 1789-1797. Voltaire's Condide. Letitia Elizabeth Landon wrote poetry for two pictures of Venice, one for the Embarkation, drawn by Clarkson Stanfield for the Amulet, 1833, the other for Santa Salute, drawn by Charles Bentley for the Literary Souvenir, 1835. Ernest Hemingway's Across the River and Into the Trees. Italo Calvino's Invisible Cities. Anne Rice's Cry to Heaven. Donna Leon's Commissario Guido Brunetti crime fiction series and cookbook, and the German television series based on the novels. Philippe Soller's Watteau in Venice. Michael Dibdin's Dead Lagoon, one in a series of novels featuring Venice-born policeman Aurelio Zen. Jacqueline Carey's Cushiel's Chosen, an historical fantasy or alternate history of Venice, complete with masquerades, canals, and a doge, taking place in a city known as La Serenissima. John Berendt's The City of Falling Angels Additionally, Thomas Mann's novella, Death in Venice, was the basis for Benjamin Britten's eponymous opera. Chapter 9 Section 1 Subsection 3 Foreign Words of Venetian Origin Some words with a Venetian etymology include arsenal, chow, ghetto, gondola, imbroglio, lagoon, lazarette, lido, montenegro, and regatta. Chapter 9 Section 2 Printing By the end of the 15th century, Venice had become the European capital of printing, having 417 printers by 1,500, and being one of the first cities in Italy to have a printing press, after those established in Germany. The most important printing office was the Aldine Press of Aldus Minucius, 
which in 1497 issued the first printed work of Aristotle, in 1499 printed the Hypnerotomachia Polyphily, considered the most beautiful book of the Renaissance, and established modern punctuation, page format, and italic type. Chapter 9 Section 3, Painting Venice, especially during the Middle Ages, the Renaissance, and Baroque periods, was a major center of art and developed a unique style known as the Venetian School. In the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, Venice, along with Florence and Rome, became one of the most important centers of art in Europe, and numerous wealthy Venetians became patrons of the arts. Venice at the time was a rich and prosperous maritime republic, which controlled a vast sea and trade empire. In the 16th century, Venetian painting was developed through influences from the Paduan school and Antonello de Messina, who introduced the oil painting technique of the Van Eyck brothers. It is signified by a warm color scale and a picturesque use of color. Early masters were the Bellini and Viverini families, followed by Giorgione and Titian, then Tintoretto, and Veronese. In the early 16th century, there was rivalry in Venetian painting between the Disegno and Colorito techniques. Canvases originated in Venice during the early Renaissance. These early canvases were generally rough. In the 18th century, Venetian painting had a revival with Chiapolo's decorative painting and Canaletto's and Gardi's panoramic views. Chapter 9 Section 4, Venetian Architecture Venice is built on unstable mud banks, and had a very crowded city centre by the Middle Ages. On the other hand, the city was largely safe from riot, civil feuds, and invasion much earlier than most European cities. These factors, with the canals and the great wealth of the city, made for unique building styles. Venice has a rich and diverse architectural style, the most prominent of which is the Gothic style. Venetian Gothic architecture is a term given to a Venetian building style combining the use of the Gothic lancet arch with the curved OG arch, due to Byzantine and Ottoman influences. The style originated in 14th century Venice, with a confluence of Byzantine style from Constantinople, Islamic influences from Spain and Venice's eastern trading partners, and early Gothic forms from mainland Italy. Chief examples of the style are the Doge's Palace, and the C.A. Doro in the city. The city also has several Renaissance and Baroque buildings, including the C.A. Pesaro and the C.A. Rezzonico. Venetian taste was conservative and Renaissance architecture only really became popular in buildings from about the 1470s. More than in the rest of Italy, it kept much of the typical form of the Gothic Palazzi, which had evolved to suit Venetian conditions. In turn the transition to Baroque architecture was also fairly gentle. This gives the crowded buildings on the Grand Canal and elsewhere an essential harmony, even where buildings from very different periods sit together. For example, round-topped arches are far more common in Renaissance buildings than elsewhere. Chapter 9 Section 5, Rococo Style it can be argued that Venice produced the best and most refined Rococo designs. At the time, the Venetian economy, was in decline. It had lost most of its maritime power, was lagging behind its rivals in political importance, and its society had become decadent, with tourism increasingly the mainstay of the economy. But Venice remained a center of fashion. Venetian Rococo, was well known as rich and luxurious, with usually very extravagant designs. Unique Venetian furniture types included the Divani de Portego, and long Rococo couches and posetti, objects meant to be placed against the wall. Bedrooms of rich Venetians were usually sumptuous and grand, with rich damask, velvet, and silk drapery and curtains, and beautifully carved Rococo beds with statues of putti, flowers, and angels. Venice was especially known for its beautiful girandal mirrors, which remained among, if not the, finest in Europe. Chandeliers were usually very colorful, using Murano glass to make them look more vibrant and stand out from others, and precious stones and materials from abroad were used, since Venice still held a vast trade empire. Lacquer was very common, and many items of furniture were covered with it, the most noted being lacquer povera, 
in which allegories and images of social life were painted. Lacquer work and chinoiserie were particularly common in bureau cabinets. Chapter 9 Section 6, Glass Venice is known for its ornate glass work, known as Venetian glass, which is world-renowned for being colorful, elaborate, and skillfully made. Many of the important characteristics of these objects had been developed by the 13th century. Toward the end of that century, the center of the Venetian glass industry moved to Murano, an offshore island in Venice. The glass made there is known as Murano glass. Byzantine craftsmen played an important role in the development of Venetian glass. When Constantinople was sacked in the Fourth Crusade in 1204, some fleeing artisans came to Venice, when the Ottomans took Constantinople in 1453, still more glassworkers arrived. By the 16th century, Venetian artisans had gained even greater control over the color and transparency of their glass, and had mastered a variety of decorative techniques. Despite efforts to keep Venetian glassmaking techniques within Venice, they became known elsewhere, and Venetian-style glassware was produced in other Italian cities and other countries of Europe. Some of the most important brands of glass in the world today are still produced in the historical glass factories on Murano. They are, Venini, Barovia, and Toso, Pauli, Milevitri, and Seguso. Barovia and Toso is considered one of the 100 oldest companies in the world, formed in 1295. In February 2021, the world learned that Venetian glass trade beads had been found at three prehistoric Eskimo sites in Alaska, including Puniik Point. Uninhabited today, and located one mile from the Continental Divide in the Brooks Range, the area was on ancient trade routes from the Bering Sea to the Arctic Ocean. From their creation in Venice, researchers believe the likely route these artifacts traveled was across Europe, then Eurasia and finally over the Bering Strait, making this discovery the first documented instance of the presence of indubitable European materials in prehistoric sites in the Western Hemisphere as the result of overland transport across the Eurasian continent. After radiocarbon dating materials found near the beads, archaeologists estimated their arrival on the continent to sometime between 1440 and 1480, predating Christopher Columbus. The dating and provenance has been challenged by other researchers who point out that such beads were not made in Venice until the mid-16th century and that an early 17th century French origin is possible. Chapter 9 Section 7, Festivals The Carnival of Venice is held annually in the city, it lasts for around two weeks and ends on Shrove Tuesday. Venetian masks are worn. The Venice Biennale is one of the most important events in the arts calendar. In 1895 an Esposizione Biennale Artistica Nazionale was inaugurated. In September 1942, the activities of the Biennale were interrupted by the war, but resumed in 1948. The Festa del Redentore is held in mid-July. It began as a feast to give thanks for the end of the plague of 1576. A bridge of barges is built connecting Judeca to the rest of Venice, and fireworks play an important role. The Venice Film Festival is the oldest film festival in the world. Founded by Count Giuseppe Volpi di Misarata in 1932 as the Esposizione Idea Nazionale d'Arte Cinematografica, the festival has since taken place every year in late August or early September on the island of the Lido. Screenings take place in the historic Palazzo del Cinema on the Lungomare Marconi. It is one of the world's most prestigious film festivals and is part of the Venice Biennale. Chapter 9 Section 8 Music The city of Venice in Italy has played an important role in the development of the music of Italy. The Venetian state, i.e., the medieval Republic of Venice, was often popularly called the Republic of Music, and an anonymous Frenchman of the 17th century is said to have remarked that in every home, someone is playing a musical instrument or singing. There is music everywhere. During the 16th century, Venice became one of the most important musical centers of Europe, marked by a characteristic style of composition and the development of the Venetian polychoral style under composers such as Adrian Villart, 
who worked at St. Mark's Basilica. Venice was the early center of music printing, Ottaviano Petrucci began publishing music almost as soon as this technology was available, and his publishing enterprise helped to attract composers from all over Europe, especially from France and Flanders. By the end of the century, Venice was known for the splendor of its music, as exemplified in the colossal style of Andrea and Giovanni Gabrielli, which used multiple choruses and instrumental groups. Venice was also the home of many noted composers during the Baroque period, such as Antonio Vivaldi, Ippolito Sierra, Giovanni Picchi, and Girolamo Dalla Casa, to name but a few. Chapter 9 Section 8 Subsection 2 Orchestras Venice is the home of numerous symphony orchestras such as, the Orchestra della Fenice, Rondo Veneziano, Interpreti Veneziani, and Venice Baroque Orchestra. Chapter 9 Section 9, Cinema, Media, and Popular Culture The city has been the setting or chosen location of numerous films, games, works of fine art and literature, music videos, television shows, and other cultural references. Chapter 9 Section 10, Photography Fulvio Reuter was the pioneer in artistic photography in Venice, followed by a number of photographers whose works are often reproduced on postcards, thus reaching a widest international popular exposure. Chapter 9 Section 11, Cuisine Venetian cuisine is characterized by seafood, but also includes garden products from the islands of the lagoon, rice from the mainland, game, and polenta. Venice is not known for a peculiar cuisine of its own, it combines local traditions with influences stemming from age-old contacts with distant countries. These include sard in saw, bacala mantecato, bisato, risi e bisi, rice, peas and bacon, figato alla veneziana, Venetian-style veal liver, ricotto col nero de seep, chicchetti, refined and delicious tidbits, antipasti, and prosecco, an effervescent, mildly sweet wine. In addition, Venice is known for the golden, oval-shaped cookies called bakery, and for other types of sweets, such as, pan del pescao, cookies with almonds and pistachio nuts, cookies with fried Venetian cream, or the bussoli from the island of Burano, the colony or crostoli, the fritole, the fregolotta, a milk pudding called rosada, and cookies called zaliti, whose ingredients include yellow maize flour. The dessert tiramisu is generally thought to have been invented in Treviso in the 1970s, and is popular in the Veneto area. Chapter 9 Section 12, Fashion and Shopping In the 14th century, many young Venetian men began wearing tight-fitting multicolored hose, the designs on which indicated the Compagnie della Colza to which they belonged. The Venetian Senate passed sumptuary laws, but these merely resulted in changes in fashion in order to circumvent the law. Dull garments were worn over colorful ones, which then were cut to show the hidden colors resulting in the spread of men's slashed fashions in the 15th century. Today, Venice is a major fashion and shopping center, not as important as Milan, Florence, and Rome, but on a par with Verona, Turin, Vicenza, Naples, and Genoa. Roberta di Camerino is the only major Italian fashion brand to be based in Venice. Founded in 1945, it is renowned for its innovative handbags made by Venetian artisans and often covered in locally woven velvet. Chapter 10, International Relations Chapter 10 Section 1, Twin Towns, Sister Cities Venice is twinned with? In 2013, Venice announced that it wants to end the sister city relationship with St. Petersburg in opposition to laws Russia had passed against homosexuals and those who support gay rights. However, as of 2020, the cities are still twinned. Chapter 10 Section 2 Cooperation Agreements In January 2000, the City of Venice and the Central Association of Cities and Communities of Greece established in pursuance to EC Regulation No. 2137-85, the Marco Polo System European Economic Interest Grouping, to promote and realize European projects within transnational cultural and tourist fields, 
particularly in reference to the preservation and safeguarding of artistic and architectural heritage. In April 2001, the city signed an agreement with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs' Office of Cultural Promotion and Cooperation to coordinate efforts at promoting Italian culture abroad. Venice also has cooperation agreements with Nuremberg, Germany, Qingdao, China, Thessaloniki, Greece, Miami, United States. Chapter 10, Section 3 Places named after Venice. The name Venezuela is a Spanish diminutive of Venice. Many additional places around the world are named after Venice, for example. Venice, Los Angeles, home of Venice Beach. Venice, Alberta, in Canada. Venice, Florida, city in Sarasota County. Venice, New York. Venice, Louisiana. Chapter 11, Notable People. Others closely associated with the city include Pietro Cesare Alberti, considered the first Italian-American, arriving in New Amsterdam in 1635. Tommaso Albinoni, a Baroque composer. Claudio Ambrosini, composer and conductor. Pietro Bembo, cardinal and scholar. Giovanni Bellini, Renaissance painter, probably the best known of the Bellini family of painters. Francesco Borgato, Italian recording artist and dancer. Marco Antonio Bragadine, general, flayed alive by the Turks after a fierce resistance during the siege of Famagusta. Sebastian Cabot, explorer. Canaletto, known for his landscapes or vegute of Venice, but not only. Rosalba Carriera, known for her pastel works. Giacomo Casanova, a Venetian adventurer, writer and womanizer. Francesco Cavalli, a Baroque composer. Enrico Dandolo, Doge of Venice from 1192 to his death, played a direct role in the sack of Constantinople during the Fourth Crusade. Vincenzo Dandolo, chemist, agronomist and politician of the Enlightenment era. Lorenzo da Ponte, opera librettist and poet, wrote the librettos for 28 operas by 11 composers, including Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Ludovico de Luigi, Venetian surrealistic artist. Dominic De Nucci, Italian-American professional wrestler. Pellegrino Ernetti, Catholic priest and exorcist, alleged constructor of the chronovisor. Veronica Franco, poet and courtesan during the Renaissance. Andrea Gabrielli, Italian composer and organist at St. Mark's Basilica. Giovanni Gabrielli, composer and organist at St. Mark's Basilica. Carlo Goldoni. Along with Pirandello, Goldoni is probably the most notable name in Italian theatre, in his country and abroad. Carlo Garzi, dramatist of the 18th century. Pietro Garneri, left Cremona in 1718, settled in Venice. Peter of Venice from the family of Great Luthier. Baldassare Longhena, one of the greatest exponents of Baroque architecture. Lorenzo Lotto, painter, draftsman, and illustrator, traditionally placed in the Venetian school. Bruno Moderna, an Italian-German orchestra director and 20th-century music composer. Aldus Minucius, one of the most important printers in history. Leon Modena preacher, author, poet, active in the Venetian ghetto and beyond. Domenico Montagnano was an Italian master luthier. He is regarded as one of the world's finest violin and cello makers of his time. Claudio Monteverdi, composer, opera pioneer, and director of music at San Marco. Luigi Nono, a leading composer of instrumental and electronic music. Joseph Pardo, rabbi and merchant. Elena Lucrezia Cornaro Piscopia, the first woman in the world to receive a doctorate degree. Marco Polo, trader and explorer, one of the first Westerners to travel the Silk Road to China. While a prisoner in Genoa, he dictated in the tale of his travels known as Il Milioni. Virgilio Renzato, composer. Frederick Rolf, 
English author of the Venetian novel The Desire and Pursuit of the Whole. Paolo Sapi, historian, scientist, canon lawyer, statesman, defender of the liberties of Republican Venice and proponent of the separation of church and state, Sapi's writings inspired Thomas Hobbes, Edward Gibbon, and the founding fathers of the United States. Carlo Scarpa, an architect with a profound understanding of materials. Romano Scarpa, was one of the most noted Italian creators of Disney comics. Giuseppe Sinopoli, conductor and composer. Angelo Spanio, Italian professional football player. Giovanni Battista Tiepolo, the last grand manor fresco painter from the Venetian Republic. Tintoretto, probably the last great painter of Italian Renaissance. Titian, leader of the 16th century Venetian school of the Italian Renaissance. Elisabetta Camina Turra, writer. Emilio Vedova, one of the most important modern painters of Italy. Sebastiano Venia, Doge of Venice from the 11th of June 1577 to 1578. Antonio Vivaldi July 1741, Vienna, composer and violinist of the Baroque era. Ermano Wolf Ferrari was an Italian composer, mostly of comic opera. Marietta Zanfretta, high wire dancer who found success in Europe and the USA. Chapter 10 Section 3 Subsection 2 Academic Chapter 10 Section 3 Subsection 3 Popular 